There's a new twist to the oldest profession. As prostitution has become virtually invisible on our streets, it has exploded on the internet and social media. With cases and arrests up 50% so far this year, young girls are more at risk than ever before. It's big pimping, baby. That's right. Big pimping, spinning cheese. The image of the flamboyant pimp personified by Archbishop Don Magic Juan is embedded in popular culture and hip hop. But pimps come in all varieties. There's king of all pimps, Jason Itzler, now a convicted felon who once ran a high-end escort service. Soccer mom Madam Anna Gristina's Upper East Side operation boasted girls with beauty brains and class. I met with Sergeant Gregory Graves at the NYPD Vice Squad. He tells me trafficking of vulnerable underage girls is far more common. Not only are they uh, young and impressionable and disenfranchised with the system as so many young people are, but many of them also have a number, a number of other problems that can be exploited. Underage girls with a specialty of convicted Brooklyn pimp Alvon Thompson, a.k.a. Legit Pimp. Federal prosecutors say he called his roster Team LP for Love Pimpin' and even had some of the 13 to 15 year old girls tattooed with his brand. He was hit with a 30 year sentence. U.S. attorneys in Brooklyn and Manhattan are cracking down with case after case and getting convictions. Graves says Pretend they often for scout for girls to manipulate on social media. And that's straight out of a trafficker's playbook. Develop that relationship, buy the material goods, keep a running tally. They've made them very dependent on them. Turn the tables and say, okay, now you owe me because I gave you all of this. Sergeant Graves says the bulk of the sex trade business has moved online to sites like Backpage and Craigslist, where John can order a girl as easily as you'd order a pizza. What we're typically seeing is more of a localized uh, cash online business that our victims are being forced or being posted by their traffickers to complete these dates with a variety of Johns. Those are just some of the issues we're going to be discussing with our panel, so let's find out what they have to say. Joining me for this discussion, Darren Porcher, Ph.D. He's a former NYPD lieutenant. He's also a criminal justice professor and the father of two girls. Darren, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. Also with us is Monica Watkins. She's um, the founder and president and executive executive director of Beauty for Freedom. She's a Ford model and a philanthropist, been doing a lot of important work on this issue. Monica, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Lisa. We appreciate it. Thank you. Also with us is Black Diamonds. He's the CEO of Black Block Studio and also the town studio. He's in the music industry, has a music label, hip hop artist, and he did seven years for promoting prostitution and is going to talk with us about how it go plays out, what goes on, and what the dynamic is between these pimps and the girls that they try to attract into this life. Monica, I want to start with you about this. We see a lot of images of pimps as being very glamorous, this whole sex trade, there's an over-sexualization that many people have discussed. What's your take on how this whole issue is portrayed in our popular entertainment? Right. I, I, I think there's a couple of things. First, um, people that are in the sex trade by choice and young women and girls and people that are in the sex trade by force. So I think that that part and that aspect of it is not really discussed enough. Um, and that uh, to many organizations is, is considered modern day slavery um, as opposed to the sex trade by choice. And I think that the hip hop industry and a lot of media sort of like really has a perspective of this very glamorous life, this very glamorous aspect of women choosing to do these uh, sex acts. And so really for the whole issue and to bring in uh, the sex trafficking or human trafficking aspect of it, it's sort of like uh, put down lower on the totem pole so people don't really understand that there are uh, horrific crimes that are happening to young women and girls who do not choose to be a part of this industry but they are forced into it and I think that needs to be spoken about about a lot more a lot more and, and you're differentiating black diamonds take us into the streets of what the attitude is is there a difference between girls that do this for choice out of choice and the girls that are forced into it tell us about that it yeah, is a, t uh, a difference between uh, 
And like, how do you, when, when, when you were back on the street, you know, when you were on the streets years ago, uh, before you turned your life around and got involved in the music industry, what were some of the ways that they, that pimps would get girls, get young girls or young women into this? Well, you'd see them outside getting money already. If, like, if you see a girl getting money already and she likes the lifestyle that you're living, she'll probably choose to be with you than the other person that she was with getting money with. But some girls just run around doing it with no body protecting them or holding them down, so they'll try to get with somebody that's going to help them. Darren, what do you find most offensive about or, or that troubles you about this whole fascination with pimping that we have, especially in hip-hop? Well, one of the things is uh, I have two daughters, and I find the social glamorization within hip hop and just the societal norms in, pla in urban places such as New York City, it's somewhat offensive to me because I constantly hear terms of "look, I'm going to pimp this out" or "this girl that I'm with, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to pimp her out" and things like that. The, the the term "pimp" has become a term of endearment, so to speak, and it, it kind of runs in comparison with the N word, so to speak. Now, granted, that's a different t that's a different subject, but when I hear that term, pimp this, pimp that, we never think about the, the psychological perspective of how this can actually destroy a young woman's life. Oftentimes, you have a lot of these women, and, just, and I can refer, my, historically, I was a police officer for 20 years, so I had a lot of engagements or encounters with women that were subjected to these types of atrocities. And what would they tell you? Oftentimes, well, there were two sides of it. Is, um, as the gentleman mentioned earlier, you have, uh, you have women that are forced into it and you have women to women that come into this willingly um, but what happens is you being you managing that situation you now should you you, you now are held accountable uh, it come, it gets to a point is whereas we as human beings how can we help our fellow man or woman so to speak when we have people commit atrocities such as putting these girls out on the street and gaining a profit for this then it, it, it begs the question of where are we going as a society Monica what about that because in in terms of the in terms of the way the young girls are are lured into it, especially the underage ones, some of the the, the strip club culture. Mm -hmm. There's there's a very fine line there, and no disrespect to the exotic dancers that are paying their way through college or putting their kids through school, but it's you know it's it's glamorized. It is it is glamorized, and um, you know I think that a lot of young girls are subject to being fooled into thinking that this is a glamorous life. Um, you know, uh, sort of like as we spoke about before, a lot of girls are sort of tricked into it, um, you know, uh, thinking that they're going to find love or they're going to find some type of a, an, a, you know, someone to accept them and take care of them. And I think a lot of that is, uh, you know, Darren and I were speaking about this earlier, a lot of that has to do with family structure as well. You know, people are looking for something. Girls are looking for profile something. Some to fit. Is, is that true? Yeah. Is, is there a profile? Is there? Kind, I don't want to use the word profile. It's a yeah. bad word. But the is there a kind of type of girl from certain circumstances that's more like, vulnerable or more likely to like, get into this? Like the family background. Like if she doesn't have a father figure in her life, she might want to have somebody as, as look up to like in life. So she'll pick a pimp to because that's the, the life she was living already. She was running around doing what she was doing already, so. Yeah. All right, well, this I is Street Soldiers. We're talking about sex trafficking and pimping. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. We'll be right back. It just makes me really angry because I think one thing that's not spoken enough about is the fact that many girls do not choose to be in this situation. I want to come back to what you were saying, saying, Diamonds, about the these girls that, these young women that are basically, they're over, are they over 18 or are they teenagers? No, nah, most of them is over 18. You got some that are young that was, go through different situations, but I never dealt with nothing like that. And these girls, and they figure like, okay, if in, instead of just having sex with a boyfriend, they can yeah, just. you might as well have a regular customer. They call him Trick, a regular customer. He'll call what me. What do they call him? Tricks? Yeah, they'll call me once a week. He'll give me $150. And they probably have two or three of them that call them, or a couple of them, or whatever. In terms of your parameters of management, yeah. what would you say your youngest girl was? 18. I wouldn't deal with nothing. Okay. Anymore. You wouldn't deal with and, and underage, because 17 is an underage. Now, let me ask you. Let's say, hypothetically, if a woman is not doing what she's supposed to, let's say she's turning tricks, as you refer to it as, but she's not giving you the money, what is your response to something like that? She What's your answer, though? She wouldn't need to be with me no more, though. Like, okay, so you would fire her based on that? Okay. Okay, so... But some pimps, some pimps would beat her up. Yes, yeah, so you got some that, are, that don't want the girl to leave because they feel the way, like... 
and they'll they'll force them to stay by force by beating them. And, but that's not it's different um, type of people. How long did you do this for as a pimp? A couple of years I was involved with it. I got a lot of friends I was doing that. It was like three, about four or five years. Because one thing that I know about business, and let's say, let's look at this for what it is. Um, it is a business. when And it can also be very territorial. Now, if you have an issue where someone infringes upon what you have, do you ever resort to violence? Or have you had a situation where you, you needed to resort to violence to protect what you have? Because you mentioned a lot of these girls come to you for yeah, protection, correct? Uh, yeah, certain... You have different incidents, like if one of the dates play games, try to rob them or not pay them or something. Okay, so if there's an issue with a customer, that's when you would step in and you would use force. How about if another pimp tries to take one of the girls, and the girl says, look, I'm willing to go, and this is your top earner. What do you do in a situation like that? By choice, she wants to go, she, she could go. And, and she's going to make like more money over there. Yeah, and how many women have you had, I want to say, at the apex of your career in being a pimp in one shot? Four or five. So you say you have four, four or five, five girls, yeah. and like what kind of what kind of? The, and this is back in the day. This is now yeah. we're talking like two thousand one, yeah. two thousand yeah. the two thousand. In the background. So we're, we're talking way back. So, you know, what kind of money are we talking about in those days? It was a lot. Like a couple thousand a night sometimes. You make like fifteen hundred, twelve hundred a night. What percentage would the girl get that if let's say hypothetically if like, you make four thousand dollars in one night, what percentage like what would cut you was it, what's a what's a standard cut for a pimp? Well if the girl was living with you and you're taking care of her, you're paying her phone bills, taking care of her hair and nails and everything okay. that she's done, like you would like she you just you you you're funding it with the money, so she's passing you the money and you're taking care of everything for her. What so she doesn't get any cash at all? You give us some spending money. Is that basically what it is? So what what he's saying is, no. So what what he's saying, what he's saying is, (laughs) he determines. He what what he's saying is, he determines how much money she gets. He takes everything, and then he 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 he, um he gives out. Okay, if you need twenty dollars, if you need twenty dollars or something to that effect. When you hear when when you hear this, what's going through your mind? Is you shaking your head? Well, I mean, I'm just really. I'm, it just makes me really angry because I think one thing that's not spoken enough about is the fact that many girls do not choose to be in this situation. They are forced in the, into this situation and then they fall under, you know, the the protection or the the, the guidance or the, the management of pimps. I've never and, met and a it, girl that was forced into it though. But you know they that there are a lot are. that were forced into yeah, it I've because it, never, and you never dealt with no. other pimps that forced girls into it no. there's it's a, a it's like a gentleman's game when you look at it like that it's like it's come, a lot come of respect to, come closer to the mic please it's a lot of respect in it it's like it's a gentleman's game it's not well, I think it sounds no like you violence, had a different so. way of dealing with yeah. it than a lot of these a lot of these guys. Because we've had we've seen mm-hmm. cases, and I've se- I've seen cases that ha- that have come through the court system where these pimps have actually branded with tattoos their name brand on the girls' bodies, like yeah, they were possessions. Yeah, there's different girls that do that because they they want to show you that they kiss. Like girls will be competing like with each other. Like the boyfriend's name or the yeah, baby father's name. Basically, yeah, they'll be competing with each other. Oh, I brought him more money today. I did this for him, and it'll be. This sounds like more of a psychological thing than anything else. You're dealing with someone, and I hate, I don't want to use the term a weak-minded person, but you are manipulating someone's mind, and you have to revert. Now, I understand Offset, we mentioned, you mentioned that you didn't have any kids. I understand that. I think that your perspective on this would be very different had you had gir- had girls. And let's, like, let's, 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 let's reverse well, this. Let's, it, say you had two, let's say if you had two daughters, and your daughters were being pimped out, and, the same, and they were living in the same situation that you provided to the the women in your stable, so to speak. What would your reaction to that be? I wouldn't. I would have been in their life, so they wouldn't have to choose that type of life, though. But is it safe to say that you do have different variations of women that that, that partake in this? If the the girl is just unhappy, as you mentioned, offset, and she just leaves and does her own thing, if you for whatever reason, if your daughter left and she was being pimped by someone else, by choice, if that's what she was doing by choice, right. I would try to deter her from doing that. I and would she. Say. Would you, okay, at, would, at any point, would you address the pimp? I would have to, but I would. Okay. I, so you would have to, so it, when you tell me you would have to, that that's clear to me that you can understand that this is an unethical practice, correct? Because you yourself said that, look, if your daughter was being pimped, you would approach the pimp. 
right or wrong. Yeah, because so it's so so that being said, you daughter, clearly understand. No, no, no. With. But you clearly understand that this is an unethical practice. So at what point, well, when you were involved it's, in this, it's, it's still a crime. It is a crime. But at what but point, me, when you were involved in this, did you realize that what you're doing is unethical? Did you feel bad? Is what he's saying? Did you ever feel bad back in the day? Before Not, you turned your life around? feel bad? Like, if the girls are chosen, choosing to do it, like, I never beat nobody up and forced them, like, this is what you got to do, this is what you got to do. We had uh, the reality TV star Mariah Lynn mm. on the show. She had the video, which was almost kind of a parody, but it was like, I'm an H and I'm admitting it and taking money, but wearing these fabulous clothes and looking amazing and just taking money from guys, it, flipping it around. But at the end of the day, it's still the guy that's in charge, Darren. Absolutely. Yeah, oftentimes, just when we go back to the, this pimp and prostitute relationship, we're highly influenced by the, by the subculture of what we see on television. You know, the glamorization, as you pointed out, when we look at these, these mega madams they have all of these things but we have to look at what is this relationship and how can we fix it as a society I hear people if there's a police shooting and there's a white officer that shoots a black person there'll be thousands of people that march however we have a common problem that's within our communities on a regular basis that common citizens fail to address and that's this this relationship of prostitution these are our children these are our young girls and we need to treat our future accordingly what can we do I really commend what you're doing in at being at the forefront of this movement but it needs to be more encompassing we need a greater push to move issues like and I'm not taking a shot at you but I'm taking a real shot at that profession because I have a problem with it but how can we remove remove this or put it put, um, put in place a less of a glamorization a because it, right. right exactly and, and, and I always right. hear this term it, this is the uh, the oldest profession in the book we need right. to get the oldest profession in the book removed it's time we to have it. to. Yeah. Is that a possibility? You think that's ever going to happen? No. Diamonds? No. What could, could you do simple. though? You know what? You say no, but you say that you're out of this life. What so can what do you, you do? Are you willing to partner with this lady and work in conjunction to push this yeah, agenda yeah. so more and more people can see that this is not the way to go? Because granted, she has a she's a visionary here, but there's people like yourself that can step into this movement and say, hey, look, you know what? I was an ex-pimp, and this is what it is. You need to look out for this. You need to look out for this. You need to look out for that. I think that's what I think that should be your duty as an ex-pimp moving forward. If you want to vindicate the things that you've done in the past. What do you think about that, Diamonds? That's a good idea. You like that? It's a great idea. It's and, a good yeah. idea. And schooling them? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious because it's 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 a real it's a real problem, and I think Darren's right. There's just you know we have attention on a lot of social issues, and rightfully so. And we've talked about them so many times here on Street Soldiers. But but this particular thing. But what about the the whole image of women too, Monica? The the images of women, everything now, and and also too, you know, in the, in this Instagram, Snapchat mm -hmm. age, it's women's bodies and body parts are out there like never before. Everywhere, what everywhere. do you think about that? Well, at first I sort of want to kind of address the issues of prostitution versus commercial sexual exploitation. Those are two different things, you know, that I think people are kind of all Getting jumbling it. About? Okay. They're jumbling it all together, and that's something, Darren, that I'd love to get your perspective on as well. Um, but so, what do you? Let me just make sure I understand what you're saying. So you're saying like prostitution is one thing, but sex trafficking and sex slavery is another thing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's totally different. That's yeah. Like, yeah. And you can't put all that in. No, but a lot of times they're all labeled under. They're sex trafficking. all labeled under, and and a lot of times they're all labeled under prostitution, and yeah. victims are. Are victimized again because they by have the law so closed. Like yeah. the law is, is like is, it's not open to, to different things. It's all closed, so they label it all as one thing: sex crimes, and that's it. All right, I want to thank all of our guests for being with us. Monica Watkins from Beauty for Freedom, Black Diamond support his music, uh, Black Block. Right, and the hip hop Black artists, Music, yeah. Black Block Music Group, the Town Studio, all that. And uh, also, thank you to Dr. Darren Porcher for being with us again for this episode of Street Soldiers. I'm Lisa Evers. Remember, use your mind as your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. Let's push for peace. <laughs>